In today's show, we're going to talk about filtering data versus data using Power Automate Flow. And more specifically, we're going to get into the complex columns. So we're going to talk about how to filter a lookup column and a choice column, because both of those are way harder than you think they are and way harder than they should be. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run through how to get to the data on both of those. And if you're not in a dataverse, don't worry. We're going to talk about some of my flow troubleshooting and learning steps so you'll learn about flow even if you don't care about dataverse. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, it's about filtering OData and Dataverse. And so, this is something we've kind of touched on a little bit before, but a friend of mine this week said, Hey, how do I filter a lookup column? I was like, Oh, it's easy, blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, Ah, uh ah. -uh. And I was like, Oh. And so, after a little trial and error, like way more trial and error than I wanted, I finally remembered how to do it again. So, I thought, if nothing else, I'll make this video so that if I forget again how to filter these things, I can look it up. But really, you know, it's nothing too complex. It's just about understanding how to see the raw data. We have to talk a little bit about virtual columns, which is, I didn't even know that was a thing. So anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and let's build a couple of real quick flows to show you how this would go. Flow? Go? I don't know. Anyway, over to my desktop. Okay, so over here on the desktop, first thing I actually want to go do is look at the data real quick. So I'm going to jump over to Power Apps. So tables, and so I have an entity or table called Chewy Tracker. And so the Chewy Tracker one, it's got a couple of columns to look at. One is the color of his mood, and the other is the toy that he wanted to play with. So the toy is a lookup column, and the color of his mood is a choice column. And so if we go over here to data, and then remember, I always use a little trick here to say custom columns, and so it just shows me the columns I create instead of all that other hot garbage. And so we can see that, you know, we've got some different ones for dogs activities, color of his mood, we got some of these, and then the toy, these are actual lookups to a different entity, and so a couple of them are penguins, a couple of them are tennis balls. So we've got enough sample data here to do some querying. Which a reminder, when you're doing this type of testing, trying to figure these things out, use small data sets. You don't need to return 10,000 items to prove whether or not this works, it just takes longer. So use small data sets so you can fail fast and then get back and figure it out. Okay, so with that said, let's go to columns. So the first one I actually want to filter by, we're going to uh, start easy, is we're just going to filter by the primary one, so dogs activity. So CR662, so I'm going to copy this name, because I'm going to show you where I started, right? So if we copy that, and if you look, you should see that I got a bunch of these, they're named flow tests. So we're going to do this, and we should get four results if I type in flow test like that. So go to flow. Let's create a new flow. Anytime I'm testing, working with flow, I just do an instant cloud flow and then manually trigger it, and then uh, video, OData, Dataverse, filtering, I don't know, something like that. And we'll create this. And so the reason I use manually trigger is because I'm just trying to understand this one thing. How do I filter the data? I'll go put that into the bigger flow that I need it into later, but doing it this way makes iterative testing so much faster instead of trying to do it in line in a big flow. So now we're gonna do some new step, and then under Microsoft Dataverse, we're going to say list rows. So if you just list rows, right, you go to table name, and so we can choose our a Chewy tracker, and I think we can search even. Yep, so Chewy, so there's the Chewy trackers. So if we did this, this would return all the rows up to the uh, pagination limits, where I think is 5,000 or something, I don't know. We're not worried about that today. But if you go down here to show advanced options, I can do things like turn it down, but more specifically what I want is to filter rows. So when you go to filter rows with this, this is the same like with SharePoint as well, um, when we go to filter the data, we use an OData query, and so in its most simple form is going to be column name, and it's the fancy column name, right? So that's CR662 underscore dogs activity, which we just copied from over here, right? Dogs activity, right there. So it's going to be that column name, and then instead of an equal sign, it is EQ, and then in flow, remember your text is a single quote, so single quote, and then what do we say? We said flow test, and close our single quote. So just like that, that is going to be when you're filtering a simple column. And so this could be like a number column. Um, I think date columns work pretty straightforward. Text column, as we're about to show here. A lot of your less complex columns, they just work this way. So then what I'm going to do as well, just be, make my life easier. I'm going to do another new step, and we're going to do a compose. Like I do in Power Apps, where I throw labels on the screen. Flows, I throw composes on the screen. And so then here I'm just going to say I want to use the expression called length. 
This is the same as a Power Apps count rows. So you do length, and then now you just make sure you get, kind of click out of there, get that to go away, put the cursor back in here, go to dynamic content, and we want to click the rows, or we want to count the number of values. So this will be the number of rows that come back total. And so in our case, we're looking for a four. So just a great way to validate you're getting back the right amount of data. But there you go. We'll hit save. Cool. And now we'll hit test. And then we want to manually perform it. So we'll click test. We'll say run the flow. And finally done. For the simple portion of the process, that's a lot of clicking. But there you go. It ran faster than I can make fun of it. And so something happened. Compose said four. Yay! So that tells us that that simple one works, right? So that's for your simple columns, right? We didn't come here to do simple columns. We came here to do complex columns. So now let's go and try to do our friend. Uh, let's go down here to do the toy. So your first instinct is, well, Shane, I'll just grab that and search for the toy equals penguin. That does not work. I'm not even going to bother doing a test of it. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It just explodes. It has no idea what you're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the troubleshooting step. So how do I figure out, well, what does it want if it doesn't want the actual name of the column, which would make so much more sense. So what you're going to do is when you have a good run like this, so it could have been a list rows where you got back all the records or you got back, you know, a subset, whatever, it doesn't matter. You want to see what does the data look like when it comes back. So in the test interface here, when you do list rows, it says outputs, it says show raw outputs. So Flow actually gave us this cute new little interface. It's brand new. I just saw this the other day. Now, if you hit Control F just like that, it brought up the browser's fine. Bleh, don't want that. So X out of this one. Make sure you're inside this box. Now do a Control F. See how the find is right here inside, right? It looks a little bit different because it's one driven by the Flow interface. So now if we start searching for P-E-N-Q. Oh, so there is no penguin in here. So, ugh, right? My... Filtered data set, none of the test ones had a penguin. All right, no big deal. I, penguin's what I'm looking for. I could probably find other ones. Let's just go find all of them. So we're gonna edit this flow real quick. We're gonna go back to list rows. We're gonna expand this out. And we're going to make sure now that we don't have anything in filter rows. So delete out any O data. now rerun it. So test automatically, boom, boom, boom. And after what felt like forever for me, it came in. It gave me a warning that I got back all the rows. Oh no, who cares? Um, but notice to compose, I got nine. This is why I told you to use small data sets, right? I got nine back when I got the whole data set, but this is how I can iteratively test and find what I want faster. So show raw outputs again, put the cursor in here again, control find. And now we search for penguin, which is his toy. And so in here, what you're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot of stuff. Let's kind of pull this up a little bit. So in here, you go away, we have penguin. And so you can see that it's like, hey, I am this column name. Oh, clicking causes bad things to happen. I am this column name equals penguin. What in the world is that? So this portion is what we call a virtual uh, column. So Notice that there's a bunch of these. So there's the formatted value, there's the, I don't know, navigation project, the logical name, the OData type, and the actual value. So in reality, uh, Dataverse is storing the GUID for all of those, but we don't want to use the GUID. We want to use Penguin. So how do we do that? Well, we can't. Sorry, spoiler alert. So what we're going to have to do, we can't use any of these uh, things on the right of the at signs. So we've got to use the raw one. So we're going to have to do this, control copy, equals this, control copy again. So now what we would do is we'd go back over here. We could edit. We'd say filter by. I'm going to use control V. If you haven't used this before, this is Windows 10. And so you have the clipboard history. Woo! It's a cool feature. And so in here I can say, underscore CR, this is what I didn't understand, the underscore, the, so it's saying the virtual column name, EQ, single quote, Windows V again, paste in that GUID, and single V, or single quote like that. So notice that, underscore CR6222. If we go back over here and we went back to columns, we're going to see that the toy column, right, this CR662 underscore the, to, to, the toy, ugh, easy for me to say, and this, they have almost nothing to do with each other. I mean, they do, you see the, the similarities, but you had to go and find the virtual version of it. So now if we do a test, 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 save and test, 
I just sit here staring into the camera, waiting on this thing to finish. Oh, there it goes. Oh. So we compose, we got two records, and we know if we go back over to our data set and went to data and all the columns, ping one, we got two records. Woohoo! So that is how you filter. You've got to go get that nasty, nasty one, right? But so it was underscore CR662 underscore the toy underscore value EQ and the GUID. There is no way to filter for Penguin directly. I've tried all the different iterations, combinations that I could think of. If you know something I don't, put it below, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it for Penguin. I had to go find out that Penguin is the GUID right here. So 06 ends with 31. Now, in the case of a lookup column, it is worth noting that if we just go back over, right? So this is doing a lookup. Where does the toy do, right? So we go to relationships. The toy is looking up in called Chewy's Toys. So if we went to the table called Chewy's Toys right here, and then we went to data, and then we said show all columns, whew, we could see that Penguin is right there. Well, it's not going to expand. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But so this right here is the same one. So this is the GUID for his record. So that's what's actually matching. So if you wanted to go get it directly this way instead of getting it the way we just did, that'd be fine. But you either way, you have to go the way we did to make sure that you're getting the right virtual name. I'd like to tell you they're always the same. Maybe they're always the same. But I, if I know anything about Dataverse, I know that they're going to find a reason for one not to be the same. You're going to yell at me. So just go get it the long way. Okay? So the other one I want to talk about just for a second, if we go here to show more, so, or show raw outputs again. So if we do control find inside here again and search for color, so color of his mood, so we can see that red is equal to 213 blah, blah, blah. So if I copy this and copy very, very delicately, copy that. If we go back and edit, if we want to find all of the red ones, then we could say, where color of his mood, EQ, Windows V, that number, right? So that in the case of choices or what they used to call option sets, it uses that type of, uh, it uses integers, right? I don't think you actually don't even want the single quotes around it if I remember right. Let's try it. So this should get me back all of the ones where it equals red. So test, test. I'm doing the awkward thing where I'm staring into the camera again, just waiting on it to finish. Thank goodness it did, so I'd have to make a small talk. And so list rows, we got one. If we go back over here to our data set again, Chewy's Chewy Tracker, data, and then custom columns. There's only one person with red. Perfect. So that particular interface, right? So uh, option or choices, option sets they used to call them, those are going to be the integer. Once again, there's no way to filter directly on red. You've got to go get the thing. Go get the thing. Go get the integer that ties to your option. Now, it is technically possible to get those from a really long roundabout way. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do it. I'll be brave. So if we go here and we go to choices, and then I'm going to control find for color, color of his mood options. And so then there is red. And I think if we do like view more, so there you go. It, it knows it is 213 million, 10,000, right? Why they put commas there, who knows? But, but that would be a, a way if you want to go directly find red, green, blue, those type of things. Now you will also notice if we go back, I guess I should have showed you this before I left. Oh, X out of some stuff, Shane, X, X. And then if we go back over here to Chewy's tracker, you will notice that color of his mood, so 6R662, color of his mood, Notice that one is not a virtual um, column. So that one does use the same name, but you need the fancy numbers. Are you confused yet? Me too. That's why I made this video, so we could all watch it back together multiple times. But this is how you filter on uh, OData filter, Dataverse, when it is complex data. So if you need help with any of this, right? Remember, we've got different options. Power Apps 911, we have consulting options. We have training classes. You can go to training.powerapps911.com. You can download this video. You can take a full class. We got lots of ways to help you. You just got to reach out. Or of course, if you just want a little quick little nudge, leave a comment below. And I try to respond to as many of those as possible. I've, I've given up on all. I get too many. I finally switched to as many as possible. So cool. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to say... Thanks, and have a great day. 
Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.